Is there a treatment approach that works on discs that is direct to the mind based? Robert's going to now take over. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jeremy. So, yeah. The message we were trying to sort of allude to just then was that you know, you've got your manual therapies um, and they're non invasive, um, but to some extent they're not really direct at working on the disc if that's where the problem is. The surgery, of course, is direct, it's often all to work on the disc, it's to remove the bulging portion of the disc, it might replace the disc, but obviously it's quite invasive. So the, the question here is you know, is there an approach that's direct and works on the disc or it's non invasive? Um, it's confident to you that. Uh, IDD therapy, which stands for Intervertical Differential Dynamics, is such a therapy. Now, I promise you, I don't have any shares in the company, it's just something that I started using in my clinic about a year ago. My background, uh, well, I'll tell you briefly. Um, I'm a son of a physio, I'm an osteopath, classes instructor, medical aid in countries, clinical um, director of Spine Plus, and also director of the National Academy Health Plan. Um, so yeah, so uh, IV therapy, uh, it stands for the stick. It's very different, it's very different, I'll explain a bit more about it in a second. Basically, it's a form of distracting the spine. So as we can see here, it's gonna, there's a disbulge there, it's gonna try and get onto that vertical level, and draw apart those two vertebrae above and below the disc, to try and induce some healing within that disc. Okay, so as I said before, it's, it's that sort of middle ground between the invasive measures and the conservative measures for directing it on direct. So, come the question, how does it work? What does it actually do? Uh, as I said before, it's distracting the disc. Um, it's a rhythmical form of longitudinal mobilisation, so it's not just static, it actually induces some forces that rhythmically draw apart that disc, that's better for the fluid dynamics within the disc. So if you imagine, you know, the sort of sponge effect, so discs are really like a big, a big sponge, they have very poor blood supply, and they rely on their nutrition by exchanging uh, fluid in and out of the disc. That's how they excrete uh, waste products and how they absorb nutrients. If that disc is getting degenerate and very um, stuck like that, there's not much exchange nutrients going in and out of that disc because the whole segment becomes stiff, uh, the whole thing is breaking down, and what you really need is to get that disc better nutrition. It's also going to, because that mobilisation effect is going to work some of the liquids and the soft tissues, some of the muscles as well. And really this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to create a negative pressure within the disc, as I said, to increase that osmotic potential within the disc, increase that diffusion rate back into the disc. And it's, it's not quite as simple that the disc is going to pop back in, um, but it's going to try and create that environment for that disc to heal up. So another question is, well isn't that just traction? Isn't that the same as traction? Traction's been around for many years. But it's based on traction, but it, there are some notable differences, which I'll explain now. Um, okay, so traction, traditional traction, is usually performed with static traction, meaning that you're on the, on the cheek couch, the, the, the traction horse you put on, and you're left there, maybe 20 minutes, without any of that rhythmical movement and changing your pressure. There's a single line of pull-off very often, okay, so it's set in one direction, um, and that doesn't really get very specifically to target individual discs. We'll explain more about that in a second. Um, and sometimes it can use counterproductive muscle spasms. So it's all very well if you're distracting that spine and distracting that disc, but then if, if that distraction force and that stretch from the ligaments is then the patient gets up, lots of muscle spasms, but compressing the segment again is going to be counterproductive. And the results of traction have often shown that that can sometimes happen. So it's around about 50% success rate with traction, I reckon, which isn't that much better than placebo. Um, and that's why it's starting to go out of fashion in the 70s, but lots of traction around, and it's much less happy now than the results are. Okay, so um, the background of LED therapy, it started in the 1990s in America. It's been in this country for around about three years or so. There's currently six clinics using it, including my own. Um, as I said, it's all about trying to increase that fluid potential, that fluid exchange in and out of this. This is, this is a little summary of what happens during the treatment session. So, um, there's the high tension, it goes up to the rhythmical movement. So it goes up to a high tension, holds it there for about a minute. Within that minute, though, it's also changing pressure, pressure up and down. You can set it, what do you want, 5 pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds. It then drops down to a lower pressure. And I'll forget it. Just that whole rhythm of 13 times roughly in about 30-minute period. Um, this particular feature here is patented products with uh, this particular piece of machinery, 
and then also it works very well for that fluid exchange thing. I mentioned before about the linear form of traction. So what we mean by that is that if you think of normal traction, traditional traction, um, the force comes on and it comes on at a constant rate. It's a little bit jerky sometimes, it's not that kind to the soft tissues, it can reduce muscle spasm, as I said. And that muscle spasm can then sometimes indirectly induce counterproductive increase in this individual pressure. However, the IDD form of traction, you can see here, it's got a kind of sinusoidal waveform. It starts off very slowly, nice and gentle, then it speeds up, and then as it gets towards the end of the height, get end, end of its target pressure, it starts to slow down. The idea of that is it's, it's, it's being nice and slow for the soft tissues. If you imagine I'm going to stretch my hamstring, if I was to really just throw my hamstring up in the air, I might tear it, I might jerk it, I might actually cause a, a reflex pattern within the muscle. If I stretch that hamstring really slow, bring it on slowly, slow it down, hold it, you nice and close the soft tissues, it's going to, it's going to take that stretch much better, it's not going to induce that hamstring muscle same, same principle with this. So it's nice and smooth, it's natural to the body, and that's why but, right, so in terms of that, um, that linear force I was talking about, this is, this is the idea here. So you're, you're setting the, the treatment angle at various heights, depending on the disc of your target. So if you imagine this is the patient lying on the bed here, and if we want to target the, the last disc in the spine, the L5S1 disc, we're going to set it to sort of a proper an angle of 5 degrees. And what we're trying to say here that if you go a five degree form, it's, it's like it, along the x-axis here, you're focusing the force at that point. If you go for a high degree, so a 10 degree, uh, let's say for the next segment, up the L4 or 5, that point on the x-axis goes further along to the left, so it's focusing the force around the L4 or 5 disc. And that's all being backed up by uh, you know, the engineering results and stuff like that. When I first got into this, I was, I was a little bit dubious because I was thinking, well, is that really the case? Does that really make sense? I actually went down to the clinic in Brighton to try for myself and said to the guy, right, okay, I want to start on the subtree, do my L5S1, I'm now to do my L34, and I could definitely feel the difference in where the force was. Still wasn't satisfied, um, but the brother in law who's got an engineering master's from Cambridge, I said to him, well, look, does this all make sense? And the same here, does this make perfect sense? And yeah, he said, actually, it does. Um, the, the engineering is the sound, the physics is sound, it makes perfect sense. That, that was what was happening. Um, again, this is another little trick, just trick the story here, um, which we've been through a little bit before, but you can also use it on the neck, so not just the lower back, um, you have a way of bringing it up to the neck as well, so you can treat it the disc of the neck. Similarly, again, you can vary the angle, so you can target upper neck, middle neck, lower neck. Um, how many sessions after the common question? And it sort of depends really on you know, the patient, the symptoms, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, but really, you're looking at you know, at least five sessions. Um, as I said, it's not as simple as popping that disc back in. Um, you've got to set up the, the right environment for that disc to heal up. It's the one we often use to people. If you put them against yourself, fit down the gym, you go to the gym once or twice, you're not really going to be much different. But if you do go for a few weeks, two or three times a week, after a month, you're really going to feel the difference. If it's, if it's a bit more severe degeneration, it might take a few more, it might take 10 or more sessions, but you know, the results are very good. Um, when you're doing IDD therapy, it's very important also to, to kind of integrate these uh, care, care packages with the patient, and the exercise therapy is very important. So it's all very good stretching out this disc, um, but the developers of the ITD will also be very keen on the whole confidence and concept, making sure the core muscles are nice and strong, able to support that disc. And in our clinic, I think most of the clinics in the country, we can take for a four stage exercise regime that runs in parallel to the IMD therapy. And so there's patient education, as Darren mentioned before, teaching people how to live properly, so they don't keep re straining their discs. It's not very well you get the best of them, so then go out and sit wrong and lift wrong, it's just going to happen all over again. Um, what can be used for? Well, obviously, the trap nerves, the side trap nerves, the rigid properties, as they're called, they're much the same thing. Um, Donated disc bulges. Okay, degenerative discs as well. So you might the disc might be bulging, but if it's thin, it will stress on other structures like facet joints. Again, it's relevant for IDD. Spinal stenosis, facet joint pain, chronic low back pain, and all those sorts of things. The indications normally are somebody who's had it for more than three months, um, they've had one or more toxic and certain treatment, yet still hasn't felt. Uh, the pain is not helping. 
um, and they don't want to have invasive movements. There are some contraindications, um, which makes sense, so people can affect the spine, they can try to use it, which is a low back. It's a clear osteoporosis. If they've got CT score of 2.5, that seems not appropriate. And again, various other things there. The MRI scan is very important because we want to know as best we can and we'll know exactly where the gift level we're targeting is, in combination with the physical examination, um, and also to rule out other contraindications. So we do use the bar or more to assist that all the patients have an MRI scan. Um, it can be given without an MRI scan, but that has to be done in the right situation for really big ones to know the diagnosis below where the problem is and there's no complication. Uh, so there's evidence based, there's an increasing evidence based uh, for it, and that's again the question you often get asked by the surgeons and the doctors what's the evidence based for it. Um, so here's, here's one that was done a few years ago. Um, and this is uh, so 450 patients treated with IPT therapy. And the measure of success was to say that the patient has at least half of their pain reduced, so at least a 50% reduction in pain. And it's taken it for three months or sort of two years. Um, and basically, this one here, this was a uh, nice percent success rate of 129 patients. Samples um, and these were the surgical candidates, so these were people that were down to have operation. Um, this one here, this is just an example of a, of a chap that I, I treated myself. Last year, the first patient he treated was here, and you can see here he had a fairly large L4 5 disc protrusion. He had this had great response for about six months. By the time he came to see me, um, he had loads of physio, and he was a doctor and clean, and there's all that sort of stuff. Um, we treated him, of course, with IPD therapy, and then did a follow up scan. Um, his symptoms, uh, I think, were like about session 15, 16, were virtually gone, um, and he was going very happy. We did a follow up scan after that, and you can see the change in his disc there. Um, there's a slight disc hole oh, still there, but it's, it's not testing the nerve, and it's certainly a lot better than it was. First um, as I said before, we'll also be used on the neck. So again, here's another example. You can see a nice big difference there. And then we'll the result afterwards, after the sessions. And again, a nice reduction in that discipline for our patient. Presumably at the beginning, we'll be having lots of arm pain for the nerve coming out from that point that goes down to the arm. Um, lots of pure arm pain for the nerve compression by the end. Um, just a bit of a quick uh, overview of what we do, as I said before, um, we're seeing the therapists, we don't just do IPD therapy, we do lots of other things as well. Um, so, therapy, I'm sure, active therapy, uh, exercise, and really, as a treatment package, this, this, you know, this whole combined hospital approach also works very well. Um, we also have a team of personal therapists and advising personal trainers that work in this office. Um, okay, so again, just a little bit of summary, so the goals really of the NGD, you know, you're trying to increase, or with, with the typical sort of back pain patient, you're trying to increase the disc health, you're trying to increase their core strength, you're trying to improve their global muscle tone, reduce their trigger points, improve biomechanics, um, and educate the patient on what you're the city rest of the I'm not sure how, how we work for the company. So that's an example of this assessment you can do with people, um, we've got some functional tests and the tests talk all about just going straight to the MRI scan and Okay, um, good, just about the time. Um, I hope you have any questions you might have.